It's time for the Maker's Secret Santa! Each year, a bunch of Maker channels get together, have a secret drawer, and make something for each other. All of the presents get sent around the world, and the whole thing's a massive loop, so you can follow the videos to see who I make something for, watch the video of them receiving it, see who they make something for, and follow the whole thing all the way back to the beginning and back to me. So this year's makers are Colin Furs, Xyla Foxlin, Becky Stern, This Old Tony, Kids Invent Stuff, Look Mum No Computer, Emily the Engineer, Ali Spagnola, Brothers Make, and of course myself. And this year I'm going to be making four... Yep, it's Look Mum No Computer. So I've done a couple of videos with Look Mum No Computer, including a fire-breathing robot project, and also I use my AI-generated musical instrument design to play his church organ. And that lives at his museum called This Museum Is Not Obsolete, which has loads of old stuff like phone exchanges in there which will work, and lots of other wonderful music things. Look Mum No Computer's quite famous for building the Furby organ, and he also seems to have a lot of other Furbies, including one that lives in his modular synth, which he uses for producing music and going live. What could I possibly make for someone who has loads of Furbies, and has every type of Furby that's ever been made? Well, a few years ago, Look Mum No Computer made a really long Furby for the Hacksmith. So, it's going to be a giant robot Furby. Here's a Furby! It should have sensors and things in, so when you shake it around and touch it, it does all sorts of reactions. Right, let's shut it up by taking its batteries out. It's got a base with four AA batteries. That's better. So we'll take those out. It's also got a base that has these tabs that push through with an actuator that makes it rock on the ground. Its furry skin's trapped with this kind of frame, so let's take that off and try and skin it and see if we can find out what's inside. Well, as well as its plastic substructure, there's also this weird wire in here plugged in at one end, which is some sort of resistive or capacitive touch sensor, I'd imagine, so that it can sense when you're touching it. Half of it's made of this mechanism, which allows it to kind of wobble on the spot, so there's a motor in there and a spring that moves that around. And on the back we've got two bits of foil, which are also attached to some wires, so I think that is actually capacitive touch for when you stroke it. There's a rigid shell on the back, and inside there we can see most of the electronics and all sorts of bits and pieces there. I've peeled the foil off there. There's also a speaker where the sound comes out, of course. It looks like the amp is on board. There's only a couple of boards inside, so there's not much to it, really. So here's my industrial strength giant Furby design. It's got a similar mechanism in the bottom so that it can rock backwards and forwards, and it's also got other features like an animatronic face. Here are some of the parts being printed. This is the front of the face, which entirely almost fills the print bed, so it's pretty big, and the back of the head, which is basically the animatronic section that holds everything, including the ears and the other servos. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor. Thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Obviously there's quite a lot of 3D printing in this project, so there's some quite big chunks that need to be made and assembled. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link, and I'll get a small commission. So the eyeballs for this project I'm actually going to take out of another old project that's been sat on the shelf behind me for quite some time. So let's just take all of that to pieces and we'll get those eyeball mechanisms out which are already animatronic. Each one of those has a servo that actuates the eyelid and another one for the eyeball. And both of those mount on the new assembly that goes in the back of the head and also has space to mount the ears. That goes on to these yellow frames which makes up the top of the Furby. And on the front we've got this face frame with the beak on it which is going to open separately and a place for the eyeballs to poke through. That fits on the front there and it looks like I got my eyeball spacing just right for the old eyeballs to fit through the new face. Its beak, or mouth, or whatever you want to call it, has a servo sat in the bottom there, and obviously that just pushes on a lever, and it can open and close the mouth. 
I need to make the ears move, so I printed this TPU flexible piece, which has got some holes in, and that goes between the servo and a piece of wire attached to the ears. And that means if the ears get knocked, if it falls over or something like that, then it doesn't break the servo, because we've got that flexible rod to take the load. Now it's time to put the base together that allows it to rock back and forth. So we've got a block there and two side pieces with some chunky bearings in that all fit together like that. There's two of those which hinge onto a piece which is actually going to go under the head and all of that goes onto two more pivots on a base which I've CNC'd out of a piece of 12mm plywood. And that gives us that rocking motion. These are car central locking motors which automatically unlock and lock car doors. They're pretty tough though, so I've used a couple of those to push that mechanism. It doesn't need to move very far, so they're probably quite ideal to give it a shove in either direction. So obviously the top goes on like that, and that gives us that motion we had in the little Furby. So that's most of the mechanics done, so let's put some electronics in and see what we can get out of it. Yep, it's an Arduino Mega. I've also got a big 5V regulator and a power distribution and PWM distribution board for the servos. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PV Case. Now, PV Case is a next generation AutoCAD based piece of PV software focused on automation and accuracy. It allows you to simulate the actual location of a solar plant from the earliest stages of planning, incorporating 3D topographical data points. So PV Case is the ideal choice for companies undertaking large commercial and industrial projects, as well as utility scale plants. The software really is intuitive and has streamlined processes to help reduce the learning curve and improve productivity. Features include everything from the prototyping stage, electrical design, stringing, shading and terrain analysis, and automatic generation of construction documentation. So PV Case really does enable engineers and designers to take the project all the way from its initial conception to the procurement phase. This really is an end-to-end -end approach which saves time and reduces errors. It's streamlined so you don't need to switch between tools or other software platforms. Other features include slope analysis, piling and collision analysis, automated topographical 3D cabling, side-by-side -side design comparison and rapid 3D building preparation. Try PV Case for free by following the link in the video description. Right, let's carry on with this giant Furby. <laughs> It needs a sound system to play some sound, so I've got this DF Robot MP3 playing board which has got um, an amp built in and you can plug it straight into speakers and it's really loud. The electronics live on a panel in the back there, so I've got the Arduino and all that stuff and the cables going up to the servos and the speaker and the sound system live in the base. It's got an infrared proximity sensor which is an off the shelf module that just gives you a signal for your Arduino and that's in the head and then we've got power distribution around the back with a switch. Hopefully this is the right type of fabric for skinning a Furby. I'm also going to need some other panels though to make it Furby shaped, so we've got a piece for the top of the head that makes it nice and round, and we've got this frame for the front here, which kind of makes it a bit fatter looking. So with those attached, hopefully it looks a bit more Furby shaped, and we can skin it with the fabric. I love making things that are cutaways and you can see what's going on inside, so I made those frame parts and those are basically going to hold the fabric around the eyes and also around a hole in the front so we can look right inside it. So there's that frame part there, I'm going to attach that with screws all the way around and I've cut the hole out so that nicely frames the fabric. And as you can see I've got a small Furby living inside. The other frames around the back of the eyes and that holds the fabric behind so that the eyes poke out and that fabric's nicely attached. So if we pull the fabric all the way around, it's starting to look a bit more like a Furby. We just need to cut some holes for the ears and fit all of the fabric. So with a few holes there and a seam down the top of the head, it looks like those ears are going to work and I'm just basically going to gather up the fabric and try and turn it in on itself and stitch it up so we can try and make the head a bit more Furby shaped. 
I've used a staple gun to attach the fabric all around the base and I'll trim the excess off. And I've kind of stitched the fabric together quite loosely all down the back there to try and bring it all into a nice curved shape. It does mean that it can be opened easily if Look Mum No Computer wants to hack it or something goes wrong and we need to open it to fix it. I found a couple of small cushions which I've hooked inside and that makes it fat and furby shaped and then I'm just going to stitch up all the fabric to gather it in. I've attached his feet so it looks just like a furby and as you can see the little furby's now living inside along with some LED illumination. The animatronics just run on a loop and if you activate the sensor then it makes it say some things quicker and do some stuff so it seems pretty random. There's about 16 different sounds on it. So we'll get that packed up and shipped off to Look Mum No Computer and you should check out his channel to see him receiving it and see who he makes something for. But I think it must be time for me to receive my gift. Is that the doorbell? Right, here it is. It says it's from Xyla Foxlin on the label. I met Xyla at Maker Central last year. So this is going to be pretty cool. She's into all sorts of stuff. I wonder what it is. Right, let's cut it open and have a look. Well, there's a little uh, sticker here that says Flight Crew NC72114. Right, what have we got here? A card that says Jimmy B. And something amazing. Right, let's open the uh, card or whatever. It is a card. It says, guess who's celebrating Secret Santa? Drawn on with a pen. Oh, wow, okay, right. So there's a another cloth badge to go with the sticker. A rocket raccoon. Oh, no, it's Scrap Panda. There we go. And some uh, rocket stickers. And um, an Iron Man stuck in here. Right. Someone's getting a gift, someone awesome and so cool. So armor up and celebrate that awesome maker is you, wishing you <laughs> the day of invincible fun. Merry Christmas, Zyla. And there's also a paper note which says, James, I'm very sorry about the packing peanuts, but at least they're com compostable and dissolve in water. I very much hope you enjoy your gift. It was an honor to get to make something for you. Hope to salsa some more with you this year. Yeah, we did dance at Maker Central after a few drinks. P.S. Please open the gift in sunlight or extremely bright light if possible. It captures on the camera way better. Right, let's have a look. If you've been watching my channel for a while or you just know stuff, then you might recognise this shape here. I can tell what this is just by looking at the side of it. All right, let's get rid of some of this packaging. Right, there's another piece to it as well. And it smells a lot of resin. Oh, and another pit. Oh, this is a, a t-shirt. Let's we'll look at that in a minute. Right. Yes, it's an Iron Man helmet. So I've got a lot of bright light on here, as you can see. So we can see what uh, Zyla's mentioning in her letter. So if we look very closely at the surface, you should be able to see loads of metallic flecks reflecting as I rotate it. So that's looking pretty cool. I'm guessing this is clear epoxy or something with a special filler or some... Uh, stuff in there. So if you want to see how Xyla made this, you should check out her channel. Some carbon fibre in here as well. Xyla does a lot of work with resin, making boats and um, other decorative things. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Thanks, Xyla. Thanks again to Xyla for sending that. The t-shirt is a merch with a rocket on, so don't forget to check out a merch store as well. Check out Look Mum No Computer's video to see him getting his Furby, and don't forget to follow the loop all the way back round through Xyla and back to me, and I'll put a link to all the other makers in the video description, and end cards on this video to Xyla's video and Look Mum No Computer's video. Right, that's all for now.